local people, important issues. CBS 10 WILM's weekly focus on the Lower Cape Fear region. This is Byline Wilmington with your host, Don Ansel. Uh, welcome and good morning. Well, today we continue our series featuring the candidates running for Wilmington City Council and Mayor. Last week, we interviewed Paul Knight, who is challenging the incumbent for the mayor's seat. This morning, we go one-on-one -on -one with Mayor Bill Sappho, who's seeking re-election. Mayor, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me, Don. Um, <coughs> Wilmington City elections are, are called nonpartisan. There's no party, na uh, party affiliation uh, on the ballot. Mm. But uh, your opponent, uh, who was here last week, said, make no mistake about it, although <coughs> these are considered nonpartisan, it's about Democrats versus Republicans. Um, the parties are involved, aren't they? Well, Wilmington City Council races, municipal elections are nonpartisan. Uh, and I like the nonpartisan way to do business because there's not a Republican way or a Democratic way to fix a pothole or take care of your fire uh, personnel or your police personnel and do things for the city. Majority of the city council, usually in most cases, except for zoning issues, will vote together on a lot of issues pertaining to city services. Um, my opponent is trying to make it a, a partisan race, Republican and Democrat. Uh, obviously, we have partisan races in the county commissioners, but we don't have them in the city council, and I hope we don't have ever uh, bring uh, partisan uh, elections to a city council. We have uh, people that serve on the city council. I've served with Republicans. I've served with Democrats. And I think it's, it's good to leave it uh, nonpartisan. One of the reasons, uh, Mr. Knight, your opponent decided to run was because the way the public input on the annexation issue mm -hmm. was handled by council. Mm -hmm. Any regrets on that? Well, we've had some calls and people that have emailed us said that we should have had a bigger uh, forum to uh, allow the public hearing. He said hearing. it should have been moved to a, a place that could accommodate more people. Well, the, the city does its business at City Hall in city chambers. Uh, the fire chief determines how many people will be in that hall. When the hall gets filled, uh, he will allow people into the hall as the uh, people will, um, move out of the hall. Um, in hindsight, should we have had it at a bigger place if we would have known they were going to be having a tea party that was also going to be part of the public hearing? Probably so. Were you surprised by the numbers that showed up? I was surprised at the number of people that showed up. Not all of the people that showed up were also from the Monkey Junction area. There was a lot of people that spoke that were not even from the Monkey Junction area that identified themselves as not being part of the Monkey Junction area. We were trying to allow the people from the Monkey Junction area to have a right to speak. Uh, I allowed the uh, public hearing to go on beyond the allotted time as the mayor of the city, and um, most of the people that, that were there that w had uh, an opportunity to speak spoke. Do you think, and this goes back to an old uh, question, I guess, do you think the majority of voters oppose forced annexation? I think the people in the annex, the areas that would be annexed would oppose it. I was in the 1998 annexation, and I can feel their sentiment. Uh, but as the mayor of the city, I'm responsible to the city taxpayers. I'm responsible to the health, the financial health of this community. And the state law is very clear. It was written in 1959 to allow cities to grow and allow cities that when certain areas abut cities that meet certain state requirements. Some people would take issue with that. Some people would say the vote, the intent of the annexation uh, legislation was to provide basic and necessary services to people who were outside the city in rural areas, but somehow it's morphed into a way to keep cities healthy. Well, and let's not forget that in the state of North Carolina, they've allowed counties over a number of years, probably starting somewhere in the late 60s or 70s, and I don't know when, the opportunity to start providing basic services that cities were supposed to provide. I don't know why that happened, but the state legislature gave that um, Doesn't that, that weaken power. the case for annexation? It does weaken the case for annexation because the person that's being annexed says, I have all of the services, the municipal services that I need. I don't need your services. But on the other side of the equation, I also have the city taxpayer that also tells me, Mr. Mayor, I have all my services that I pay for as a city resident. I don't think that I should be providing services in the county that I don't use, like parks, like a sheriff's patrol, uh, like planning. Uh, that I don't use. So there's arguments on both sides of the equation. I think the state legislature at some point in time is going to have to have a definitive definition as to who provides what services so you don't have this morphing where you allow counties to do that. If it came down to an issue that you as mayor had to make a decision on, where the majority of voters favor one side, but you perceive the interests of the city to be better served on the other side, what do you do? I'm going to vote 
for what is best for the city of Wilmington and what I think is the best for the city of Wilmington. I look at those budgets. I have to provide a certain basic service to this community. Uh, I've ar always argued um, uh, uh, with the county in, in respect with uh, the sales tax revenue, which I think needs to be redistributed. Uh, I think there's ways we can look at this to make it fair and equitable to all parties, but I do not think that when you're collecting 80 percent of the sales tax revenues within the incorporated city limits and the city is retaining only 22 percent of that sales tax revenue and yet we're having to provide the basic services maintain roads if somebody has a wreck in the city uh, whether they're a county resident or from out of state we maintain we go to that that person and take care of that person providing parks providing the cultural amenities that our community has come to love and and want there's so. been some discussion that council's top heavy with members connected to development and real estate you are margaret haynes is jim <coughs> Quinn, all have real estate interests or connections to the real estate industry what's your response to that my response is that the this is a great country and this is a country of laws and not of people the citizens have the right to determine who's going to sit on city council who's going to sit in the state legislature who's going to sit in congress and you know we, do we have too many lawyers in Congress, there could be an argument to that, but the voters of this country vote them in. Um, I do, I am in the real estate industry. Uh, there are laws and ordinances that, uh, uh, that are on the books that I don't always agree with, but as the mayor of the city, I have to uphold those laws and ordinances. And if somebody that's in the real estate industry says, I don't like them or I don't think they're fair, it makes no difference. Well, there's also concern that, that, uh, that you get a lot of cam campaign contributions from these same interests and that when big money flows into political campaigns from special interests, uh, do you think there's a perception that there are expectations and strings? <clears throat> no, because, I, first of all, I've had a lot of different people contribute to my campaign. Yes, there's a lot of people in the real estate industry that have contributed to my campaign, but these are people that I've known since the 80s when I got into the real estate business. These are friends of mine, people that I've done business with, and they believe in the vision that I have for the community. You know, when it comes down to a vote on city council in regards to an annex, or not an annexation issue, but a zoning issue, that developer uh, and that person that's going through that process has got to go through a lot of different hoops. Obviously, they have to have the planning uh, board and planning staff approve the plan. They have to have the planning commission vote on it. And then it comes to city council. There are mechanisms in place to protect the property owners. For example, uh, a protest petition. Uh, the minority of city council, two votes of city council, can kill a rezoning. So there are mechanisms in place to protect that. And there has to be overwhelming um, uh, facts that would tell me that if a developer goes through the process that uh, he can't get uh, the rezoning, you know, we're that's gonna, the way I feel about it. We're going to have to hold it there. We'll, we'll come back, take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the collapsed convention center hotel deal. Stay with us.